do today is present a quick overview of an implementation we've done for a customer of ours recently, um, McNab. McNab are a construction company and we're looking for some process improvements throughout the organisation and the one that really stood out was their timesheet system. So this is an overview of their SharePoint job pack integrated timesheet system. So when we first went in to talk to McNab, they explained this process that they had around their timesheet. Um, so that, as I said, they're a construction company. They've got um, construction workers working in various locations throughout Queensland. Um, those construction workers might be tradies, they might be foremen, or they might work in the site office. And they've got staff back in offices um, in Brisbane in Queensland. So the situation they described is they were using a paper-based system to submit timesheets. Now they were filled out day-to-day, week-to-week by each of the different groups of um, users and they might be faxed in, they might be posted, they might be handed in to the payroll department. So at the end of the month you can imagine the payroll department had a huge um, mountain of timesheet entries that they had to go through and not only was that very time consuming it was also a very laborious task um, and fraught with errors obviously typos as they're being typed in transpositional errors etc um, ultimately each of those paper timesheets were typed into the computer um, they were um, put into excel spreadsheet which in itself was a bit of a bind because they, we had three different operatives all working on different versions of a spreadsheet and then somebody had to reconcile that into one single spreadsheet before ultimately it was then uploaded to job pack which is their um, time and payroll system so a very disorganized um, process uh, with obvious areas that could be improved so I took a look at that um, and saw that they were already using SharePoint, Windows SharePoint Services 2007 for their intranet and decided to develop for them a timesheet application based on SharePoint that would automatically create the Excel spreadsheet that could be uploaded to job pack. So serving them um, quite, a long, quite a lot of time in the process. So, um, the system was developed on SharePoint 2007, but it also works in SharePoint 2010, and it works on an iPad. So this quick demonstration is going to show you all of those things working together. Um, we'll use a quick screenshot for the 2007 system, but I'll show you live uh, how it works in 2010 and on the iPad. Um, so here we go, we've got the overview screen of a timesheet system in 2007, and really that's just proof that it works in 2007. What I'd like to do today is present a quick overview of an implementation we've done for a customer of ours recently, um, McNab. McNab are a construction company and we're looking for some process improvements throughout the organisation and the one that really stood out was their timesheet system. So this is an overview of their SharePoint job pack integrated timesheet system. So when we first went in to talk to McNab, they explained this process that they had around their timesheet. Um, so that, as I said, they're a construction company. They've got um, construction workers working in various locations throughout Queensland. Um, those construction workers might be tradies, they might be foremen, or they might work in the site office. And they've got staff back in offices um, in Brisbane in Queensland. So the situation they described is they were using a paper-based system to submit timesheets. Now they were filled out day-to-day, week-to-week by each of the different groups of um, users and they might be faxed in, they might be posted, they might be handed in to the payroll department. So at the end of the month you can imagine the payroll department had a huge um, mountain of timesheet entries that they had to go through and not only was that very time consuming it was also a very laborious task um, 
and fraught with errors, obviously typos as they're being typed in, transpositional errors, etc. Um, ultimately, each of those paper timesheets were typed into the computer. Um, they were um, put into Excel spreadsheet, which in itself was a bit of a bind because the, we had three different operatives all working on different versions of a spreadsheet and then somebody had to reconcile that into one single spreadsheet before ultimately it was then uploaded to JobPack, which is their um, time and payroll system. So a very disorganized um, process uh, with obvious areas that could be improved. So I took a look at that um, and saw that they were already using SharePoint, Windows SharePoint Services 2007 for their intranet and decided to develop for them a timesheet application based on SharePoint that would automatically create the Excel spreadsheet that could be uploaded to job pack so saving them um, quite a long quite a lot of time in the process so um, the system was developed on SharePoint 2007 but it also works in SharePoint 2010 and it works on an iPad. So this quick demonstration is going to show you all of those things working together. Um, we'll use a quick screenshot for the 2007 system, but I'll show you live uh, how it works in 2010 and on the iPad. Okay, so a very quick overview of the Visual Studio project for the techies amongst us. So um, here we've got the solution. And what you can see is in the very first project here, um, we have all the SharePoint assets, so we've got the list definitions for each of the supporting lists in, that are going to be created in SharePoint. So as an example there is the, the cost code project. So here, here we've got the cost code module, um, which shows us how we want that list to look and what views we want on that list when they get created. And there's a list instance within that module as well. And the same for the job numbers, um, the timesheet entries themselves, and the submission is the thing that wraps up a timesheet entry. So as the user enter t enters time, that time automatically gets added to a timesheet entry list. And then when the user at the end of entering all their time in for that week decides they want to submit their timesheet, they get a submission, uh, uh, an item is created in the timesheet submission list. Okay, so that's the SharePoint. Um, structure. Then we've got the controls. So we've got a single control here which is the office timesheet record user control which is displayed on the, um, if you're familiar with SharePoint, the disp form for the timesheet submission list. Moving on we've got a repository um, project within which we define where we get all our data from. Um, we've got a repository per um, SharePoint list. The thinking there is if we ever needed to decouple a SharePoint list and use a SQL Server database or some other source instead, um, we would just have to replace the repository class, not a, the whole application. Um, that repository class then maps onto business objects through a set of custom mappers and it's the business objects we use in our presentation layer, whether that be the user control that we see in the controls class here or whether that's one of the web parts that we use to support the process. So there's two web parts that support the process. One is the export timesheet. So when you finished um, the week and everybody submitted their timesheets, you click a button in a web part and it creates a spreadsheet that can be uploaded directly to job pack. Um, then secondly we've got the timesheet summary web part. So a supervisor can go into the timesheet summary web part and when they look at it, any of their reports, um, they'll get progress against their timesheet. So they can see who's submitted time, who's not submitted time, and who's actually completed the timesheet. Okay, so we're ready to do a demo of the timesheet system. We'll submit some time using the PC here, and then what we'll do is we'll go and get an iPad, and we'll submit the rest of the timesheet using the iPad and I'll show you the process by which supervisors check on timesheet entries and the export process as well. So let's start. 
So what we've done is we've incorporated Ajax into SharePoint um, 2007 and 2010, so it works the same in both environments. Um, so to save real estate, we can hide and collapse different areas of the screen. Um, so you can see for this week, um, I've not yet submitted any time. So as soon as I'm ready to add time, I can expand the timesheet entries area. Um, notice there's nothing there yet, so I need to click the add entry button. And this is what McNabb wanted to do. Their week starts on a Wednesday and goes through to a Tuesday. So we've structured the way that they enter time to reflect that. Um, we've pre-ticked the boxes that they'll use most often um, just to make it easier for them. So um, let's just say I've been working in the IT department um, Wednesday through Friday. And I don't need to enter a cost code for um, IT. Uh, I've been doing normal time, I've not been on annual leave or anything like that, and I've been doing 8 hours per day. So I'm ready to click OK on that. And that has gone and saved my time away to the timesheet entries list in SharePoint. So I don't need to save as I go along. As I go along and add time, it's automatically being saved into SharePoint, um, ready for me to submit when I'm ready to submit it. Um, and it's automatically um, hidden that section as well. But if I expand that down, I've now got what I'd expect to see. I've got the time I've entered so far, and I'm able to edit or delete items from it as necessary. So I'll just... OK, so here you can see the iPad. And you can see we've already loaded SharePoint, and we've loaded the timesheet application. We logged in as the same user, so we can see the same time as we entered on the PC earlier. So let's go ahead and let's enter some time while we're on site using our iPad. So we're only going to enter time for Monday, Tuesday, because we've already entered Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And we'll select from one of the jobs that we've got available to us, we'll select Brisbane Defect. select cost code and then we put our time down to that activity we'll go ahead and click OK now and save those timesheet entries let's just check that works we can see in the summary we've now got five entries let's go and check the detail to make sure all those entries are right. Yeah, that's looking good. So as you'd expect with an iPad, we can tilt the screen, etc. We can zoom in and zoom out, all the normal functionality you'd expect. Okay, so back to the PC now, and what we'll find is if I refresh this page, there we go, we'll see we've got all that time we entered on the iPad in our timesheet as well now. And we'll just go and look at the entries and make sure that's what we put in. Yep, Brisbane defects, eight hours a day, excellent. So now we've got all the timing we need. We're ready to submit the timesheet. So I have to tell the system who my supervisor is, although in subsequent weeks it will remember that from last week and automatically populate this page. Um, and then I'll also use this template, this spreadsheet, this um, and I'll also use this timesheet as a template for next week's timesheet so that when next week comes around and I reload this page, um, I'll automatically have the time entries I submitted last week in for this week. So for people, who, people whose jobs don't change too much, um, they don't even have to enter time each month. They just have to click the button and say OK. So there we go. I've specified my supervisor, but I want to use this as a um, as a template. Any notes I want to send to my supervisor I can put in here and then I'm ready to submit. Okay, so we get the confirmation message back that the timesheet submitted. Um, so now if I go into the admin side of the application and show you how that works, um, I'll do that by going back to the home page where I've added a couple of links. So I've got my timesheet administration section here what we can see is the user I was logged in as 
um, has submitted a timesheet which has not yet been approved by their supervisor and a quick overview of what's in that timesheet. If I want more details on that I can click the edit button and I'm able to actually edit that timesheet on behalf of the user. I can add entries as well if I need to. Um, I'm not going to do that so I'm happy with it how it is and I'm going to click accept. So now that it's been approved um, it actually becomes available to the export routine that creates the spreadsheet. So you can see I've put the web part on the same page here. Um, so I can now click export. And what the export routine's gone and done is it's gone and looked at any um, users we have defined in the system. And for any of those users that have submitted a timesheet that's been approved, it's created the spreadsheet. So what we can see is it's process one user's timesheet, um, which had five records on it. And there were no timesheets that had been submitted that were unapproved.